Uh, I figured you'd like that. How y'all are? Welcome to the Moon Gravard Show as we liven it up <clears throat> on hump day right here in the great state of Louisiana as we fight the good fight for the people to state as uh, lawmakers continue to tell us locally, statewide, that if you just give us more of your money, we can help you to prosper. Man, the tax and proposals coming up left and right, <clears throat> locally, uh, statewide, are just unbelievable. That I didn't, I didn't realize this. You know, when I kind of coined the phrase, that take if you would give up more of your money, you can prosper. <laughs> you know, and, and by the way, our lawmakers in the state of Louisiana, local and state, are trying to do everything they can to prove that's right as businesses and jobs uh, continue to get out of the state. And by the way, I, I, I broke in heart yesterday. And I'll, I, I may have told you this, Brandon. I don't remember what I told you. Brandon goes, I don't remember what you tell me either. <laughs> uh, my nephew and niece are now two more very educated people, two kids, live in Baton Rouge. Uh, they are headed to Texas. Guess why? Job. Very educated, was making good money, got a lot better opportunity, and they're gone. And that's the things that break my heart. Because it starts affecting family, and a lot of people already know what I'm talking about because it's affected you. I got the uh, deal yesterday. Not only that, the mom's moving over there too. Business and jobs, and it continues to do this. We continue to, and people in the governor's office could give a rat's butt. I'm convinced now they only want people dependent on government. And this is why we're seeing the growth of gambling. The biggest growth we've ever had in gambling is now. Uh, Ronnie Casino Johns keeps saying, well, we're not expanding gambling. You've expanded it big time. As you know, Riverboat Casino is headed our way. They are headed to the land. They are headed to the land. And people really think this is going to prosper us. They really think more gambling is going to get us where we need to be. Folks, I do not care if you gamble. I don't care. You know, gambling is supposed to be suppressed. I keep forgetting we got gaming, not gambling. Harris is up today. I'm making a prediction that if Harris doesn't pass, I'll be shocked. Brandon, all they got to do is pass the Senate. Remember, it's already passed the House. And in the Senate, (laughs) that's where everything passes that shouldn't pass and everything fails that shouldn't fail. And in and, and the sports betting, Brandon, they got to wait till next year, I think, even though they tried to get the governor to put in a special call. The expansion of gambling under Bell Edwards, I wonder if that's going to worry people when it comes to election time next year. The busy, biggest expansion of gambling is happening under John Bell Edwards. It never really expanded at all under Mike Foster and Blanco and Jindal. But under Bell Edwards, I'd be glad to sign it in. So we now believe that I, st- and let me tell you something, mostly, I'm not going to say all the time, but most of the time when states start turning to gambling as their new business, as their new way of doing things, that means we're giving up on real jobs. We're giving up on companies growing here. The goal now is to see how much they can take from the taxpayers. Why? Because there are so many people on the dole. Medicaid proves that. So many people on the dole, they don't really care what taxes are because they're not really paying them. They're getting all the freebies, and they're going to vote Democrat. They're going to vote for the Democrat. You know, keep they, they're using the term fake budget. Jay Darden coined the phrase, now the advocate has put it in there, pretend budget, Brandon, that's it. Jim Beam has put it in there. And... Now they put in a pretend budget, pretend budget. Jay Darden said it. The press picks it up. I told you with Jay Darden, that's what they do. Got us accomplished nothing except he's got a nice retirement of fourteen, eighteen thousand dollars coming to his to his uh, household starting after he, if he makes it through this year because he'll have his three years. And all he had to do was knife vitter. All he had to do was act like he's some kind of conservative Republican. They they in all these hospitals now, and the reason they did a PR in these hospitals is real simple. Okay, let me just lay it out for you. They went out there to tell people how bad Republicans are and how bad the House is and how basically 
I'm going to save you. So remember when election time comes that it was me who fought for y'all, who get the money that y'all deserve so the benefits could keep coming in. And that's the angle of this. That's it. He's running the private sector into the ground. GDP, we had a minus GDP for two years. They're doing nothing to change that because they just, it's lawsuits, lawsuits, lawsuits. The hell with the private sector and grow government. And y'all really believe this man should be reelected. The problem with it is the people that are leaving the state, like my family members, they're the educated ones that were educated here, that have young kids here. They're our future, and there goes our future. So the voters that are going to be, they're not going to vote next year. They're going to be voting against Edwards. But they're not going to vote next year. So our best and brightest will leave. The ones that are educated will leave. And only people here left to vote one day are going to be people going to vote for people like Edwards and Dorton, which John, John and Larry are. They're going to vote. These guys are doing great. It's kind of like the inner city vote. We vote in Democrat. We don't give a dang if the rapes and the killings and the starvation and the illegitimacy and we have crime galore. We don't care. We're going to vote Democrat. We're not even going to understand why we're voting Democrat. That's what's happening in Louisiana. Okay, it's gone too far, Griffon. Uh, it's negative. No. No, 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 no. I'm honest. I'm being honest what's happening to the state of Louisiana. That's all. And frustrated that we won't change this crap. Bill Edwards, the honor code. Boy, that wasn't a hypocritical slogan, was it? He's not a hypocrite. Only Vitter was the hypocrite. How hypocritical is that honor code? Honor code of what? And they go pick Jay Darden, who's accomplished nothing except to get himself a major, major retirement and a gigantic salary. And people get mad at me for telling the truth. They don't get mad at them. Oh, no, man, they warriors for the state. Keep putting John Alario to run the whole Senate in the House into the ground, which he constantly does. We got to have a constitutional convention to change this. Go ahead and run it. Go have the constitutional convention. Big business is going to get their way. The left, left is going to get their way. And the middle is going to be sucked out of here. And it doesn't need to be that way. So I get frustrated. See, this hits me just like it hits y'all. Family members leaving. Young, best, brightest. I'm talking about bright young people that work their butts off, that have accomplished a lot with two kids. See, you going to Texas. Putting it on their Facebook, we cannot wait to start our new life in Texas. And I'm sitting here going, my God. But there we go in Baton Rouge. Oh, by the way, speaking of ignorance, <clears throat> I said Baton Rouge and ignorance. There's an editorial today in the Advocate. Oh, as graduates leave, Louisiana lawmakers play pretend. And it's really amazing to, to read this because – they missed the boat on so much. They really believe that if the lawmakers would just pass some more taxes and get the budget straight, that these young people are not going to leave. And that is, they're not even in the ball game. They're not even in the same state I live in. Listen to this. Meanwhile, the season two graduates are deciding where to begin their careers, and they've been encouraged to think for long term. But within the halls of state government, Elected officials can't seem to think past tomorrow as they play political games while Louisiana languishes. Is it any wonder why that so many of this year's graduates will end up moving out of the state never to return as residents? See, they missed the point. You think, how many, how many, Brandon, I've asked this to you because you're younger. How many people are graduating this year going, well, I'm watching the state legislature to see what they do. Do you think they're really sitting around watching the state no. legislature to see if they pass a budget? No. Or do you think they're worried about their future and where yeah. they're going? I think they're worried about their future, and I think that, <laughs> unfortunately, when you think of Louisiana, there's a lot of negatives that come to mind, and I think it's been really getting piled on over the past few years uh, with the combination of Governor Jindal and now Governor Edwards' administration. I think all those negatives start adding up after a while. It does, Brandon, but I don't think there's one graduate saying, you know what? I'm moving out of the state because they won't pass a state budget. That's as dumb as Robert Adley, former Ask Adley. It ought to be ASS, but Ask Adley, 
Uh, well, I know a company that wants to move here. This Robert Alley told me we played it. I don't know if you still have it, but we played this on uh with Aaron and uh. Oh God, he's gonna kill me. Robert, man. Robert, dang it, Robert! I'm sorry. <laughs> they do it on Kill. They interviewed him. He said, "I know a company that wants to move here, but they want to see the budget stabilized." And I said, "Name the company." He won't name it because he made that crap up in his head. That's the same thing here. They're writing an article saying these kids are all looking at what they're doing in Baton Rouge. No wonder they're leaving. They're not leaving because of that. They're leaving because they got a job, a real job in the private sector that they feel like their future is better off over there. When they go over there and go, wow, no income taxes. Wow, sales tax is not the highest in the country. Wow, my automobile insurance went down. They're going to be wild. I know some of y'all are going to say, wait, wait till they see their property taxes. They're going to laugh at that. So this is what the advocates, the advocate is making you think that young people are watching this and making the decision to leave because of what's going on in Baton Rouge because they can't fix the budget. You'll never fix a budget when you got a spending problem. Never. You cannot fix a spending problem by raising more money to keep everything going the same. Folks, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about because this is common sense. They're dealing with pure ignorance. The advocate and all these print uh, media people. The people, are, kids are looking around. I can see me going to graduate. Yep, I'm leaving Louisiana because they're not fixing the budget. No, they're not. They're leaving Louisiana because they got a thing called a J-O-B. For you people in Balkanville, that's job. Let's take a break. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hop time. We'll take a break and be right, right back. They just don't get nothing right, folks. They're worse than the legislature. They're back in a governor who doesn't even understand what he's doing and a co-governor who's even worse. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Grafon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline as we rock and roll. An editorial in the advocate once again misses the boat almost on every point. But people in Baton Rouge get this and read this and agree with it. Uh, you know, making a case that these young graduates are moving out of state never to return for jobs uh, has nothing to do with the state budget. There's not, I guarantee you, there's not one tenth of one percent of anybody graduating college that's concentrating on the state budget. None. Not one. They're graduating. They either have jobs or they're going to start looking for them. Or they've been looking for them and they're waiting for the right job. And as in my case, my family member, two very educated people, they're gone. Looking forward to a new life in Texas. You know, and they're trying to convince us. And by the way, they mentioned in the article, but I'm reading the whole thing about pretend budgets. Okay. It's, it's amazing to watch. Check this out. This is another paragraph. The inspiration for the fairy tale fiscal charade is well known to anyone who lived in Louisiana in the past few years. Check this out. Former Governor Bobby Jindal's budgetary policies crafted for the consumption of primary voters in his doomed presidential campaign rather than the good of Louisiana left state government finances teetering on collapse when his successor, John Bell Edwards, took office in 2016. Now, here's what they don't say, but I'm a nice guy. I'll add the rest of it. Bell Edwards voted for six of eight Bobby Jindal's budgets. They keep going back to the old Stelly Bill. Stelly Bill was a big in, in, increase in taxes on people that itemized, people that had small businesses like me. It slapped us in the face. It was totally wrong. Mike Foster didn't pass it. Lobby set on the side. The Republican Party sat on the side. That thing would have never passed. But Foster owned the Republican Party and Lobby sat on the sideline. Never had it. Almost lost anyway. It was the only one out there in the areas we went for the most part slaughtered it because they knew the truth. So this is what they don't tell you. They keep going back and blaming that income tax cut really hurt this state. But the bottom line is Jindal was never for it. Jindal was never for that. Jindal saw the train station leaving for the tax cut and he got in an airplane or a helicopter and got in front of it and got on the front train and took credit for it. And they blamed Jindal since. Jindal never voted for that or against that. He was against it. They fought against it in the committees. But the legislature is the one passed that, not Bobby Jindal. This is where they get it wrong. I'm not, I'm, once again, I'm not defending Jindal. Nobody has been more harsh on Jindal than me. But what really happened, Bell Edwards voted for the income tax cut. He voted for this income tax cut. 
the, the media blames the income tax cut for the problem, and Bell Edwards voted for it. You get my drift here? And Bell, Ed, Bell Edwards voted for six of eight of, of the budgets. Yet he, he gets he gets taken to task. He don't get taken to task at all. They don't even talk about this. They just blame Jindal because it's easy to blame a guy that's not even here anymore running the state. Now, do I blame him? Absolutely. But I blame Bill Edwards, too. And Bill Edwards gets a free rate inherited a $2 billion budget. That was a lie the first time they said it. It's a lie today. He didn't inherit a dang thing. He voted for it. And the press continues to take up for him and to praise him and to give me an accolade that he's really doing the job and the Republicans don't want to do anything. All they, they ought to come out and say, we need taxes. We're raising taxes to hell with all you people that don't want to raise taxes. That's what they ought to do. But yet, that's not what happens in this story. It's all Bobby Jindal's policies. He's running for president. Well, I thought he was running for president, too. I thought that would catch up, and I thought we would. CB used to say, we're going to write his legacy. We did. But you don't tell the rest of the story. Bell Edwards voted for the tax cut. He voted for six of the eight budgets. Bobby Jindal never had a budget vote. Ever. Bell Edwards did. Bobby Jindal didn't vote to get rid of the Steli Bell, the tax bill. Edwards did. So if you're going to blame all that on Jindal, at least be honest about it. Bill Edwards is just as guilty. Now he's a hero. Folks, young people are not leaving because what's going on in Baton Rouge. Go ask the average person. And all they can tell you is, well, they couldn't hire it. That's it because they've been sold that bill of goods by the people in education. They don't know what's going on in legislation. They could care less. Ask a senior. They want to go to work. And unfortunately, they're going to have to go somewhere else. That's the bad thing. And we don't address that at all. All right, we've got to take a break. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, your opportunity to be a voice is now. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. I mean, you look, I may be in the minority here. You people listening today may really believe that we can only pass a bunch more taxes and stabilize this budget. Our best and brightest are not leaving. I mean, you may believe that. And if you can, if you can, if you believe that, I wish you'd call and tell me how does that work? Because maybe I'm missing it. You know, maybe, maybe I'm missing something here because I don't see what the advocate is talking about has anything to do with state budget, young people leaving. I just told you I've got kinfolk. I've got people that are leaving that are not just graduate. They just they got two babies. They're in their thirties, and they're leaving. And it's jobs. It's job related. Okay. It's it's it's. I just I don't see the relationship between state government having plenty of money. When by the way, they do have plenty of money. Jay Darden said, pundits who say we need to live within our means are now being proven wrong. This is Jay Darden. Jay Darden made a comment to the press club, pundits who say we need to live within our means are now being proven wrong. Now, I want you to think about that comment. Brandon, I think you ought to live within your means and you think I'm wrong. So that means go ahead, Brandon, and, and buy, that, buy that boat now on credit and go get you a house in Florida. Jay Darden said that. Pundits who say we need to live within our means are now being proven wrong. So, Jay, we're supposed to live outside our means? Well, we can't, you can't, you can't create enough tax revenue to satisfy y'all. But that was Jay Darden. This is the guy they think is the smartest man in the, in the state. Let me quote him again. Pundits who say we need to live within our means are now being proven wrong. Wow. And this guy is helping. He's at head of the bond commission or helps run it. He's on the estimating conference. He's running the state. He says there won't be a miracle fix on the budget. There's no way to fix this budget. The only responsible way is to raise taxes. Jay Darden, a Republican, the co-governor. I 
I think the Republicans are crazy to give Bel Air with a permanent tax. But Jay Darden wants a permanent fix. What's the permanent fix, Jay? Jay Darden said if there was a National Association of Can Kickers, Louisiana would be the charter member, led by Jay Darden. Jay Darden and made sure they sent out letters to people to scare the hell out of them. He did it on purpose. They said it was well thought out of. Jay says we need compromises. He says it's a recognition for the greater good for the people who represent shows that the public is served better by the agreement of both parties rather than by leaving devastating impact on what can fix in six weeks. This is Jay Darden. Jay Darden. Running his mouth out there. Why he his retirement is going to be fourteen to eighteen thousand dollars a year. All he had to do was knife bitter. I can't believe you can make a statement like that. Pundits who say we need to live within our means are now being proven wrong. So, Jay, let me ask you a question. Tell me what I need to do to make sure you have enough money. Do I cancel my – Maddie has one more year at her school. At St. Thomas More and Options Program. Do I cancel that and give you that money every month, Jay? Jay, do I cancel my health insurance? What do you want me to cancel, Jay? You want me to cut? What do you want me to cut? You want me to get rid of uh, maybe one of my vehicles and pay that note to you, Jay? You know, since I'm proving you're wrong that living within your means is wrong. Can you imagine somebody that thinks the smartest guy in the state making a dumb statement like that? Pundits who say we need to leave within our, live within our means are now being proven wrong. Live outside your means. That's really intelligent, Jay. Jay. How much money? What else do you want me to give up, Jay? Pay more income taxes? Pay more sales taxes? How about the mandates that I have on me, Jay? Can I get rid of any of those? Property taxes? Health care is a mandate now. Uh, Health insurance. You know, look at the mandate. Sales taxes. Sales taxes on gas. What What do I cut out, Jay, to give to you? Why is nobody asking, what do we do to cut out to make sure they have it? They have all of it. I mean, I've heard Jay Darden say some stupid things. Pundits who say we need to live within our means are now. I'm being proven wrong, folks. We do not need to live within our means. Don't live within our means. We need, the government's already growing twice that of our economy. We're already living way beyond our means, Darden. But not old Jay. Not old knife stabbing Jay Darden, whose ship has come in. That is, I mean, folks, I'm reading it. I'm reading it. How dumb is this? But boy, Jay stands up because Jay has always been a liberal's liberal, liberal. He's always been far to the left, putting on that Republican banner because he can't tell people who he is. He's got to tell people he's conservative. Man, when I was a senator, Senate finance, it was screwed up them too, Darden. It was screwed up then, too, because I was sitting behind the mic, and I remembered. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's go with Paul and Lake Charles. Paul, how you doing? Hey, good morning, Moon. Yes, sir. Uh, I, heard something, I heard something yesterday, and it, and it made me think of Louisiana, but it's not Louisiana. It's, it's Chicago. But this is something that uh, if they get wind of, they may try to do that here. They, they have proposed – to add 1% property tax for the next 30 years. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You got to say it again. You broke up when you was you was telling us what the tax was. Hey, By the way, I heard this, but go ahead, tell it. Oh, uh, you already heard the story. No, but don't, no, no. They're going to add. Tell the audience. They're going to add, they're proposing to add 1% say, uh, tax to people's property taxes. On top of what they're already paying, they're going to add 1% for the next 30 years. 
and maybe you can explain this to me, but it, to me it contradicted itself. They're not worried about you being able to sell your property. They're saying because you're not going to be able to sell your property, so you're going to have to stay. Absolutely. Because on the other hand, they also they, they also said that people were going to use this opportunity to come in and buy property. Mm-hmm. Now, why would you come in and buy property with this kind of tax structure? Well, you wouldn't. Matter of fact, as I heard the story, that what's going to happen is people will not be able to sell their homes. So the property, the property value is going to go down, and you're stuck with the property taxes if you can't sell it. And if I was, let's say I was living there and I sold a house to Brandon, Brandon would have to take on a 30-year tax of 1%. So, if it, Brandon, if your house was $300,000, you would have to pay $3,000 a year for the next 30 years. So that's another ninety thousand dollars on top of your house. Yeah, on top of all other property taxes, another ninety thousand dollars over the life of the loan, Brandon. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not on the life of the loan, the rest of your life. Listen, they're coming up with creative ways to take our money, and on the flip side, and, and you know what it's for? You know what it's to fund? Yeah, pension funds for uh, government hear, workers. Unfunded uh, public liability. They unfunded accrued liability, and that's what they. That we, we, you familiar, realize, we got the same problem here, but Jay Darden, Jay Darden, and, and John Bell Edwards aren't addressing any problems. They just want more money. But how can you be a commissioner of administration, a guy that was ahead of the Senate finances, and says the pundits who said we need to live within our means are wrong? Holy cow! What a statement. Anyway, I got to go, Paul. Thanks for well, the call. Uh, okay. Thanks for the call. We gotta take a break. 844-766-6607. Hicks it as a hotline. Unbelievable. That's the minist- Commission of Administration, Jay Dorn. <laughs> All you moon. <laughs> All you. And the post office guy. Oh, blaming it on the blaming it, it the on big, the, the, the post, post office guy's man a now. big fan. Oh yeah. And uh I was talking to him. Yeah. He he has a catfish pond. Yeah. And what he needs is he wants to get some catfish out of it, about 300 of them. Mm-hmm. So I said, he's trying to net them, and he couldn't get them like he wanted them. So I, it's only a half acre. But they, asked, they told him to get $300 out of that. So what I told him, being a nice guy, mm-hmm. that me and Walker will come fish him out for him. Matter of fact, just cast off the bank. If you can catch 300 catfish in a day or so, you didn't have a hell of a day. Mm-hmm. And I told him I didn't want any. But he said he wanted to take them out, give them to people, and feed people so he can get his, his pond healthy. So being a nice guy, I volunteered yeah. my fishing expertise to mm-hmm. catch the catfish Yeah, in a stock pond. <laughs> That's going to bite every cast. Next time, I'll just play the whole album of uh, Creedence Clearwater for our listeners probably while, while we're waiting for you to come and that, in. And, it's, and if our ratings go up, we'll know what we have to do next week. Yeah. All right, 844 766 Six six zero seven Hickson has a hotline. Johnny and no, not Johnny and Lafayette. Keith and Lafayette. Keith, how you doing? Welcome to the program. Doing great, man. Listen, uh, that proposal guy and you were talking about on the taxes. Yeah, this has already been uh, proposed, and I want to say uh, Illinois or maybe Minnesota, somewhere up north where these brainstorms always start. No, that's Illinois. But, uh, Illinois is where this is. This it is, is Illinois. Yeah, uh, I, I couldn't remember exactly what I heard, but you know, I, I'm gonna have a listener all this. Craziness. Uh, also, I want to ask you this constitutional convention that they're proposing. Uh, other states has gone to uh, a popular vote as far as presidential election. We do. Uh, we do. Po- we, we, do this- we do popular vote for presidential election too. Oh, is it now? We do. We, okay. we do electoral it's, college, but it's, it's popular vote per state. Okay, because it was something that was going to uh, help, the, of course, help the Democrats in, in gaining power. Because if you remember, uh, Hillary Clinton supposedly had had won the popular vote. You know, and a lot of this is occurring in, in Democratic states. You know, and I'll speak of Washington. Uh, Washington has, has decided to, to go in this direction. And if you've been watching what's going on in Washington state, they are uh, passing big taxes on big big businesses. Amazon is is going to pull out of Washington yep. because they want them to pay more taxes for a homeless uh, fund. And if you remember, Washington is trying to become a, a sanctuary state as well, just like California. Yep. You know, and th- they're shoving it down everyone's throat. You know, and th- th- this isn't how America works. You well, know, uh, it's it's listen. We're never, 
going to tax our people to prosperity. People that want nothing but taxes are being purely ignorant over what they think they're going to get for that. People that think they're going to benefit from the taxes are purely ignorant thinking what they're going to get. I'll give you an example. Our retirement system uh, is so screwed up right now, and nobody is doing anything about it. Jay Darden wants us to live outside of our means. We've done that already. It hadn't worked. It hadn't worked. And so they're not, they're not, and listen, if we give Jay Darden and Bill Edwards every tax they want, they will fix absolutely no problems. They will not, you know, people ought to come to us with sincere remedies to fix stuff, to get stuff headed in the right direction. They never propose anything. All they want to do is get a lot more money in their pocket to keep going in the same direction we've been going. Period. Look at it. If this constitutional convention would, you know, be something, uh, like you're saying, to benefit the state. And let's look at welfare reform. You know, if, if a lot of money given out to people who choose not to work, but they have five, six, seven, eight, ten kids, you know, how is that going to fix our state? It's not. It Matter won't. of fact, somebody just wrote to me that, that knows that 40% of our adult population cannot read above a fourth grade level. That's who votes for Democrats. I hate to say that, but they vote mostly Democrat. Anyway, let me run. Appreciate the call. Yeah. One of the things that you mentioned that he just mentioned about changing welfare and stuff, let me tell you, yesterday they got shelved. Senators refused tax review of Louisiana Medicaid recipients. Louisiana Senators shelved a proposal Tuesday, Tuesday that would have let the legislature audit the use state income tax returns to check people's eligibility in the Medicaid program with opponents saying the bill's unfairly targets the poor. Well, how's that unfairly targets the poor when it's the poor that benefit from it? They voted six to three against the house bag measure. The house passed this Democrats oppose the bill. Democrats oppose anything to do with responsibility. Democrats will always oppose anything to do with fairness they claim it's not fair, targeting the poor. Nobody's targeting. We're trying to find out who doesn't deserve it. According to Jeff Landry, it's about $483 million a year being wasted on Medicaid. It's a way to combat Medicaid fraud, period. It's really a good piece of legislation. Nope. Going after the poor. All they let them do is go look and see who's getting the money. That's it. But the Dems and Bell Edwards' party, who, by the way, wants to get rid of the Second Amendment, that's Karen Carter-Peterson. Carter said, while uh, it appears to be an attack on the poor, the disabled, and the disenfranchised, by singing, who's, who is disenfranchised, by the way? I understand poor and disabled. Disenfranchised? Who's disenfranchised in this state? If you're getting freebies over freebies over freebies, how are you disenfranchised? How's that hurting somebody? He's going to look in there and say, hold up, we got a bunch of people that don't belong on this. And they don't want that. They don't want them off of it. So they're not going to look at welfare reform. They can't get simple bills like this passed. They can't even get them out of committees. We don't want real reform, folks. Trust me. Woke up this morning, just in my area, they want to pass a three-quarter cent sales tax and a property tax. It's going to be on the ballot this fall in October and November. I'm sorry, November and December. Two new taxes. Livingston Parish Sheriff proposes a sales tax increase to increase school safety. Who's going to be against that? Half cent. Half cent to, to help student resource officers at every public school. Who's going to be against that? So we got, see, folks, you got to, people don't understand this. I don't know how to explain it to people. You know, the Lord put us a platform, gave us what we need in the Bible, what we need to be doing. And as we get way away from that and way away from God, we create problems for ourselves, okay? And then we create solutions for the problems, and the solutions will never fix the problem. Illegitimacy in itself is immoral. You might get mad at me for saying that, but it's a fact. Illegitimacy has caused a lot of the problems that we have in this country because we want to make sure kids are taken care of. Who wouldn't want to not take care of a kid? But it causes a lot of problems, but nobody wants to admit that. We got Medicaid fraud. Democrats want Medicaid fraud to continue. Let's go to Charlie in West Monroe. Charlie, how you doing, sir? 
Yes, sir. Amen to that, uh, Brother Moon. Uh, appreciate those words. Uh, two things. Uh, $400 million goes to lobbyists every year. This was when Bell Edwards first took office. Uh, Jay Darden said it would take six weeks to go through all the agencies line by line to cut cut waste. He hadn't done Where it. Is that happening? Take He's six not. weeks. He hadn't done it. I mean, actually, Jay Darden, is, it's almost been two years. It's been over two years since Jay Darden said he was going to look at the contracts that Kennedy talked about. Get back to us and tell us what we can cut. Two years, I haven't seen one thing that he's come back to do. Not one. Not one proposal. Not one. Exactly. By the, Thank you, man. Yeah, by the way, Jay Darden says that the pundits who think we ought to live within our means have been proven wrong. <laughs> See, Brandon, you should be living way outside what you're making, Brandon. I'm telling you, go ahead and buy that condo in Florida, Brandon. Go ahead and buy that condo and get that big old boat down there. Hey, you're not living outside your means enough. According to Jay Darden, I've been proven, you've been proven wrong, Brandon. You need to live outside your means. Folks, they ought to take this and run with this. Kennedy, Landry, Scully, whoever's running, uh, Abraham, you need to take this line that Jay Darden said that pundits say we need to, we're proven wrong that we live, need to live within our means. That was, Jay Darden said that. So we everybody live outside your means. Do it the Darden way. All right. Uh, let's go. We go to Joyce in Lafayette. She was waiting the longest. Joyce, how you doing? <laughs> well, yes, I'm doing okay. How are you? Doing, doing good. Good today. Yes, ma'am. Um, I went to the uh, council meeting last night. I know this is on a local issue, and you're talking about the state more or less. But the two combined, you know, it just sounds like all they want is more taxes. Uh, last night it was very interesting because it was a full house uh, for the council meeting, and. Right before the council meeting, uh, they pulled the DA's request for two mills for expenses. Uh-huh. And then they explained during the meeting that uh, they had just found that they could get the, uh, mo- he could get the money in a different kind of way. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into how that was, you know, really. Uh, but I found it interesting because the four, um, Members of this self-appointed committee on the on the council, which is uh, Kenneth Boudreau, Bruce Conk, Jay Castile, and Kevin Nakam, um, said they studied it for a year. But then, right before the council meeting, they withdraw that particular millage for the DA's office. And then we're sitting there waiting to talk. And on um, somebody's iPhone, we see that the sheriff is asking for three quarter uh, cent sales tax. Mm-hmm. So it's like a bombardment from, you know, n- not just the state, but from the local, too. And they can't find any way to cut back. I-, I could tell them a few ways that I see, but, you know, they didn't ask me. And I, I just uh, I just find that interesting that they just think they can keep going to the property owners and we're going to foot the bill for, for, for uh, say, the jail, the recreation, create, uh, it's it's just getting to be ridiculous, you know. Well, you know the, the the only saving grace on any of this stuff is the people locally have to say we're voting for it. Now I know even with that, it's kind of tough to beat them because there will be uh, a lot of people out there begging for the tax money. Okay, and I know mm-hmm. that. I know that, but the bottom line is, well, you do get to vote against it. You know, Moon, this area has shown over the past couple years with various taxes, if there's a tax that they don't want passed, they've shot it down. The school board tax, and then you had the library tax as well. But, yeah, you've had the other tax renewals uh, pass. But, Brian, and so, I mean, they've shown. But you remember what I told you, you got to have, and I've said it since day one, I've been saying it for a while because it was taught by CB. If you don't have opposition, organized opposition, all those taxes would have passed. You had organized right. opposition, and that's why they got beat. Well, and there still is organized opposition. It's even more, and it, and I think the organized opposition, and I'm sure Joyce can attest to this, is even more emboldened now after oh, absolutely. the library tax failed and the school board tax failed. Well, this is two taxes, like in November and December, well, they're going to try to they're going to try to pass here. Now, by the way, Livingston Parish has a tax that will be a half cent sales tax. This is an area that was devastated by the flood. Of 2016, mm-hmm. and they're talking about putting a half cent, and and part of it, I don't know if it's all of it, but part of it is to increase school safety, and it's and, and all they got to do is come back and put the right words on these taxes, and people will vote for them. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, my daughter lives in Ascension Parish, and they actually seem to be very satisfied with the schools over there and different things. Uh, they seem to be satisfied with law enforcement. Now, that's not Livingston, but it is very close. So I don't know if they were going to vote for more taxes over there, but, um, you know, they seem to really be satisfied with the schools. They have, a, uh, I think, one of the highest rated schools in Louisiana, and I don't know if that's the highest in the nation because we're not too high there. But I think you, uh, you're going to, you know, you're going to see people really getting uh, upset over these uh, additional taxes. And they had some people that want to put the library tax back on uh, the ballot in November. Well, that was voted against. I mean, the people spoke out. That's $39 million sitting in a bank drawing maybe 1% interest. Yeah. That's a total waste of money. Yeah. So well, anyway, I want to thank you. Just say there is... But I will say that the Citizens Against Taxes are being vilified as being a pack of lies. And let me say this. I'm not, I'm not in that pack, but the information that is on that website is taken from the city, par- the parish records. It's not a pack of lies. You but know? No, but that's, once again, you're dealing with the press. The press has came on the side of we can raise taxes mm-hmm. anytime, anywhere, and it's a good thing. Always. And, and the bottom line is... Sooner or later, we're going to pass a breaking point. I know my good friend Dallas Hicks, and I can't wait to visit with Dallas again. He's been talking about this breaking point for a long, long time on my program, and he thinks we're past it now. It's it's easy to vote for a property owner to pay taxes if you're not a property owner. But let me say this to those people. They pay the bill also. They pay it when they go shop at a business. They pay it when they pay rent. They may think they're not if they're not a property owner, but the taxes go up. The price of everything goes up. And you need to free up some money so that people can operate and not be so fearful of these taxes. It's really really not a good thing. And the other thing about the self-appointed committee, well, I do admire the fact that they made the effort why were no conservatives, no Republicans included on that committee for a more balanced? Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Good you question. Know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We've got to okay. go, Joyce. Listen, thanks a lot. Thanks for the call. Let's, uh, I tell you, we've got to take a break. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Hi, hello. Welcome back, Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us as we rock and roll on hump day. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. This is more for Brandon than y'all folks. But next Thursday, Brandon, which is the 24th, we will be at the Mudbug Festival in uh, Shreveport, in conjunction mm-hmm. with our good friends at Keel mm-hmm. on Thursday. And on Friday, <laughs> we'll be in Alexandria at Hickson Autoplex. We were really supposed to originally go this Friday. I had to make some changes. I thought so. Well, we had to make, I had to make some changes, personal stuff. They come up that I couldn't, I couldn't, Friday was going to be rough, put it that way. So by the grace of God, uh, Dallas worked with us and of course our good friends at KSYL, uh, 970 AM and of course the Center Broadcast and they were able to make some adjustments. So that's the adjustment uh, on the road next Thursday and Friday, which by the way, if you want to get paid that week, you better remind me early. <laughs> I'm getting paid two days early. My Wednesday will and, be my Friday. Yeah, yeah. Brandon really hates the way I work that out for Oh, him. man. I know. I'm just such a tough, tough boss. Huh? I couldn't be a boss. Mm-hmm. I, I'm too nice of a guy. Mm-hmm. And Brandon's looking at me, and I'm, I'm really joking, but I'm not. Yeah. I do not mind fussing about elected officials and what they do, but I do not like getting on just people in general. I don't. Uh-huh. You know how I am. I, 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 once I blow up, now I ain't worth a crap. I'm admitting that. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and you've seen a few times I wasn't too happy, but basically that's far, far in between. I hope. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I rather, once again, I'd laugh at myself too much to take myself so serious. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe you're gonna be away from here for two straight days, Moon. You ought to be pumped. Uh, I think of some <laughs> other people that'll be pumped. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be excited. But uh, anyway, no, we'll we'll be gone a couple of days, but it's 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 no biggie. Uh, matter of fact, go to Shreveport. And Alec, I don't know if I'm just going to be gone or come back and then shoot to Alec. Alexandria, I'm telling you, from my house to Hickson Autoplex, Brandon, is about an hour and five minutes at the most. Wow. I'm that's that's there. short considering. Well, when I was in Monroe coming to Alec, it was yeah. about a buck forty. Yeah. 
No, but and that road's cleaned up so much in the last ten years, maybe an hour and thirty, forty minutes to get from my house, which I was in Sterling. You're just lucky you don't have to go through Lafayette to get to the interstate to get to Ellick. I don't that's have to do any of that forever. stuff. I shoot shoot on ninety three and I'm sitting yeah, coming out over that Grand Coteau. So it's mm-hmm. it's not a bad deal for me. And even when I go to Lake Charles when I was in Monroe, yeah. three and a half hours minimum. Yeah. See I'm on But the, now yeah. I from my house to Doctor Snow's, fifty minutes. Fifty five minutes. Good, I mean, you're no a good time. launching point. Oh, absolutely, you had a really good launching point. Man. Absolutely, I, I agree with that. But I'm I'm able to get to places a little bit quicker now. Uh-huh. When I go to Shreveport and Monroe, the funny thing about being here, Shreveport and Monroe are both right at three hours from Lafayette. Yeah, you know, you're just going northeast well, or northwest. Especially again, if you're launching from right from my, outside of Lafayette, from my like you are. Yeah, I'm not going through the See, city. For me, if I'm going north, I got to go through Lafayette. It takes a while to get through. No, Lafayette. no, and it depends on what time you leave. Right, yeah. I'm leaving. I'm talking about. If I go to Shreveport and I don't go the night before, yeah. if I leave at 4.30 in the morning, which I get up anyway, mm-hmm. uh, 7.30 I'm sitting at pretty much where I need to be. Yeah, It's, 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 it's really, really neat. Those I, long, live, the, I live in a place where I can get to places really quick. Yeah, those good launching points make a difference on those trips. Yeah, but, but the, thing, good, the thing man. about it is I'm, I'm five minutes from I-10 yeah. and I'm 15 minutes from 49. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, That's boom, I can, I can motor, man, no That's doubt good. about it. And, uh, you know. I ain't got a ticket in a while, so uh, uh, I guess uh, I guess I'm closing in on another one. Oh man! <laughs> four, four, well, seven, we don't six, have any of these six, speed cameras around six, here right now. Oh, that's no, I, man, I tell you what, that's helped me to lock the last <laughs> yeah, year or two. I gotta tell you, you know they're coming I, back though. Oh, I know they're coming back. Joe Robodeau is not only coming back, but the tax man is striking again for more taxes in this area. <laughs> oh, and, then the, and then the sheriff wants a uh, three quarters of a sales tax. Hey, no big deal, folks. When we all making the money we are making in the state of Louisiana, what's another? Hundred, two hundred dollars out of your pocket a month. I mean, you know, that's going to help you prosper. Don't forget that, and don't forget, quote Jay Darden, they the pundits have been proven wrong that we can't live within our means. Quote Jay Darden, Commissioner of Administration, <laughs> folks, they ought to take this and run with this. Kennedy, Landry, Scully, whoever's running. Uh, Abraham, you need to take this line that Jay Darden said that pundits say we need to were proven wrong that we live need to live within our means. That was Jay Darden said that. So we everybody live outside your means. Do it the Darden way. All right, uh, let's go. We go to Joyce in Lafayette. She was waiting the longest. Joyce, how you doing? <laughs> well, yes, I'm doing okay. How are you? Doing, doing good. Good today. Yes, ma'am. Um, I went to the uh, council meeting last night. I know this is on a local issue, and you're talking about the state more or less. But the two combined, you know, it just sounds like all they want is more taxes. Uh, Last night it was very interesting because it was a full house uh, for the council meeting. And right before the council meeting, uh, they pulled the DA's request for two meals for expenses. Uh And then they explained during the meeting that uh, they had this found that they could get the um, he could get the money in a different kind of way <clears throat> i'm not going to go into how that was you know really uh but i found it interesting because the four um members of this self-appointed committee on the on the council which is uh, kenneth boudreau bruce conk jay castiel and kevin Nockham, um said they studied it for a year but then right before the council meeting they withdraw that particular millage for the DA's office. And then we're sitting there waiting to talk, and on um, somebody's iPhone, we see that the sheriff is asking for three-quarter cent sales tax. Mm -hmm. So it's like a bombardment from, you know, not just the state, but from the local, too. And they can't find any way to cut back. I, I could tell them a few ways that I see, but, you know, they didn't ask me. And I, I just uh, I just find that interesting that they just think they can keep going to the property owners, and we're going to foot the bill for 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 uh, say the jail, the recreation, create. Uh, it's it's just getting to be ridiculous, you know. Well, you know the, the the only saving grace on any of this stuff is the people locally have to say we're voting for it. Now I know even with that. It's kind of tough to beat them because there will be uh, a lot of people out there begging for the tax money. Okay? And I know uh-huh. that. I know that. But the bottom line is well, you do get to vote against it. But you know, Moon, this area has shown over the past couple of years with various taxes, if there's a tax that they don't want passed, 
they've shot it down. The school board tax, and then you had the library tax as well. But yeah, you've had the other tax renewals uh, pass. But Brian, and remember, so I mean, they've shown. But you remember what I told you? You got to have. <clears throat> and I've said it since day one. I've been saying it for a while because it was taught by CB. If you don't have opposition, organized opposition, all those taxes would have passed. You had organized right. opposition, and that's why they got beat. Well, and there still is organized opposition. It's even more, and it, and I think the organized opposition, and I'm sure Joyce can attest to this, is even more emboldened now after oh, absolutely. the library tax failed and the school board tax failed. Well, this is two taxes like in November and December well, they're going to try to they're going to try to pass here. Now, by the way, Livingston Parish has a tax that will be a half cent sales tax. This is an area that was devastated by the flood of 2016, mm-hmm. and they're talking about putting a half cent. And, and part of it, I don't know if it's all of it, but part of it is to increase school safety. And it's, and, and all they got to do is come back and put the right words on these taxes, and people will vote for them. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, my daughter lives in Ascension Parish, and they actually seem to be very satisfied with the schools over there and different things. Uh, they seem to be satisfied with law enforcement. Now, that's not Livingston, but it is very close. So I don't know if they were going to vote for more taxes over there, but, um, you know, they seem to really be satisfied with the schools. They have, a, uh, I think, one of the highest rated schools in Louisiana, and I don't know if that's the highest in the nation because we're not too high there. But I think you, uh, you're going to, you know, you're going to see people really getting uh, upset over these uh, additional taxes. And they had some people that want to put the library tax back on, uh, the ballot in November, well, that was voted against. I mean, the people spoke out. That's $39 million sitting in a bank drawing maybe 1% interest. Yeah. That's a total waste of money. Yeah. So well, anyway, I want to thank you. Just say there is. But I will say that the Citizens Against Taxes are being vilified as being a pack of lies. And let me say this. I'm not, I'm not in that pack, but the information that is on that website is taken from the city par- the parish records it's not a pack of lies but no but that's once again you're dealing with the press the press has came on the side of we can raise taxes mm-hmm. anytime anywhere and it's a good thing Always. And, and the bottom line is sooner or later we're, other- we're gonna pass a breaking point i know my good friend dallas hicks and i can't wait to visit with dallas again he's been talking about this breaking point for a long long time on my program and he thinks we're past it now it's it's easy to vote for a property owner to pay taxes if you're not a property owner. But let me say this to those people. They pay the bill also. They pay it when they go shop at a business. They pay it when they pay rent. They may think they're not if they're not a property owner, but the taxes go up. The price of everything goes up. And you need to free up some money so that people can operate and not be so fearful of these taxes. They... It's 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 really really not a good thing. And the other thing about the self appointed committee, while I do admire the fact that they made the effort, why were no conservatives, no Republicans included on that committee for a more balanced? Yeah, I don't um, know. That's a good question. Good question. You know? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We got to okay. go, Joyce. Listen, thanks a lot. Thanks for the call. Let's. Uh, I tell you, we got to take a break. Eight four four seven six six. 6607 Hickson has it hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Heard around the great state of Louisiana and parts of Texas and Mississippi and Arkansas. Appreciate you being part of the program as you rock and roll. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. You know, I like to have fun. Everybody knows I love sports. Got a gentleman here I actually just met last year. Uh, Coach Mike Thibodeau with the Turlings Catholic team, who, by the way, uh, won another state championship this year. First of all, congratulations Thank you, for this year, but you actually won three in a row, and I think you played four in a row. So that's yes. a pretty good thing going on. Yeah, thanks. Moon's pretty special, and happy birthday. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> the only reason he threw that in there is because he knows I'm an STM guy. They always compete against each other. <laughs> and I said, I told Brad, and I said, I, I, I'm going to get Coach Thibodeau on us. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't like him. And Brandon said, what are you scared of? He said, yeah, yeah right. I said, I'm scared of anything. What are you scared of? Yeah, sure. uh, but, but, but no, really, uh, congratulations. I know uh, I do have to ask you about one. First of all, talk a little bit about your team because really, and I told you this 
last year when I met you, when you mm-hmm. won the state championship the second time, I said, mm-hmm. Coach, were you expecting to win it all? He said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's what you told me. But could you say yeah. the same thing about this team, to win the whole thing? I know I know what your expectations are, but I'm just mm-hmm. kind of curious. I'm asking you the same question, but in public this time. Man, I, I'm telling you, um, when you work as hard as we do, and these boys make the sacrifices that they make, and then you you, you become such a close family, honestly. And you get to the point where, like, you really trust – you know that that I, you know they're going to do their job, and you believe that you're going to do yours, and um, it gets to a point where you you feel like you deserve it, and you expect it, and and um, and that you you know we we got this faith and this belief going that we're going to get it done. So I don't put anything past them, you know. And um, you know this year's team was 21 of the most lovable young men that you've ever been around, and everything comes out in baseball. You know, you play 34 <laughs> ball games in the regular season, man. You learn everything about kids. Spend so much time together, and um, so you just discover that there's a champion, you know, within each and every one of them. And it's just a matter of if they find out how to play um, on that championship level when it's most uh, when it's most needed. I told uh, you, uh, the guy you compete with at STM, Coach Perkins, one time because they had a rough <laughs> day. I said. It can be cruel. Baseball can be cruel, yeah. but so can life. Yeah, no and, and and what's amazing is I think out of all the sports, this is I, no cut. I'm not when you say that you got to. I think football is the most biggest team sport out there. Mm-hmm. I do. Okay, but I think baseball is More the like biggest life, life up mm-hmm. and down. You got to come back, and it didn't go well for you. And you feel like you're on an island. If you got to catch a ball, mm-hmm. and you're having a bad day, it's gonna find oh, you. Oh man, it's gonna and, find and, you. And and if, and then in the big moment. The guy coming up the bat, my God, he struck out four straight times. It, yeah. That's life, though, Coach. Yeah, that's and I think life. it's because you got to do it every day. You know, every in football, day. you play once a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In baseball, it's every day. It's you, you got to start all over again every day. Everything's, every day's but, a new day. But isn't that know? not about life? When you woke that's up life, this morning, man. it's another day. That's right. You know, I, I'm not the same guy I was yesterday. You know, i got a, I got a new <laughs> set of challenges in front of me today. <laughs> You know, and you, you're not the same guy you were yesterday. <laughs> no, you're a no, year older. I was 56 yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but your program knows, so that, and that's why I asked the question up front, because I remember when mm-hmm. you answered that the day I met you here. And I walked out, I said, you know, I like that, because what you did is you didn't limit your kids on the potential mm-hmm. that they have at the beginning of the season. You basically said, we're going to work our butts off. Mm. We're going to let that take care of itself. And mm-hmm. it goes back to that day-to-day preparation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. The The word process gets thrown around so much, but you have a process on what you need to do to be successful, as does you know everyone in this building. And same thing in baseball and in life, you know, in the workforce or in school. You know, you, you don't just wake up one day and you're successful. You know, there's there's things that have to happen along the way, and – God gives you what you need to be successful, but he doesn't make you successful. You have to use those tools, and I believe that's what uh, we've been able to discover uh, as a team over the last you know, handful of years of, of uh, it, there's, champion, there's a champion within me, you know, and it's finding out how to, how to play that way. And by the way, those, those young men that you're coaching and other coaches are coaching, they go on <clears> to be men. With responsibilities, I saw at the end of the game. I actually got to watch. Uh, we, we watched our, our team play. Everybody knows I'm STM, but mm-hmm. I got a chance when I went home to watch your game. Yeah, it came on TV. They had it on CST. Yeah, so I was able to go back. I was taped it later, whatever, and was able to watch it. I thought one of the unique things was at the end of the game when you were able to grab your kids because you mentioned. Yeah. Tell a story because you mentioned to me off there mm-hmm. how they really wanted to go the year before you didn't, but you, yeah. you went and grabbed them this year. After yeah, the game. definitely. So, so our kids, uh, our team breaks on family. You know, as so we get together and come together, and after we pray and have you know our meetings at the end of every practice and game, every practice and games. One of the seniors, you know, Kane and Dodge this year was the guy for it, and he calls them up and say, "Together to the top," and we say, "Family on three, one, two, three, family." And we talk about it all the time. So we're not just gonna talk about something; we're gonna live it. And so I want my children. You know, whom I'm, you know, every coach, Coach Perkins is the same way, you know, and I have so much respect for him and the program at STM, no doubt about it. But every coach makes such a sacrifice. Um, and I think it's so important that my kids know where daddy's at and what I'm doing. And I want them to see that these, these kids are worth it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm away from you, but I want you to know why, because these 21 boys that I'm with every day and I'm away from you and my, you know, and the three or four assistant coaches that I have, they're worth it. 
You know what I mean? And um, so I bring my kids around as often as I can. Uh, I only have one son, so he's the one that gets to come into the locker room and whatnot. <laughs> but my, my two little girls, you know, I have a newborn. I have a 10-month-old Caroline. And anyways, last season we won state championship, and then I go to the gate to grab them because uh, we kind of had a little tradition going on the three previous championships. Whatever – kid was born at the time i went and i got him and brought him out there and uh my wife won't come she doesn't want it she wants to be behind the scenes but anyways my daughter was so mad at me after the 2017 state championship i told her baby it wasn't my fault the guy at the <laughs> gate wouldn't allow anybody in yeah by the way by the way the truth is known you hadn't told your daughter no yet so that was the first time <laughs> you explained that to your daughter <laughs> so i she said dad if we win a state championship this year i want to be on the field i said I promise you, I'll get you, baby. You're, you're worth it. So I, I had to argue with the guy at the gate for a little while, and I told him to go ahead and find me whatever you need. But my children are coming on the field with me um, to accept this trophy. You know, they're they're part of the family too. And what what the awesome thing was is Richie Garrett, my assistant now for seven years, has uh, a granddaughter. And I saw him holding yes, the baby out there. And so he followed, and, and he grabbed his granddaughter, and she was out on the field for the state championship trophy. And I noticed that John Curtis did the same thing, too. I, I saw their state championship picture, and they had oh, several yeah, of the you, kids you, on the you, team. You set the trend, so you go for it. <laughs> All they got to say is, hey, well, I, hey when they I, look I saw back, Thibodeau. I saw Thibodeau out there uh, with his kids. I won't be able to you know, have a, have a huge um, – you know, a bank account that I'll leave behind for my kids when I'm gone, but they'll have those memories. You know, we were on the field well, with Dad I, for those state I, I championships. I just want to let you know, I just thought about this, too. I got a <clears> uh, <throat> STM uh, baseball banquet tonight I'm going to, so I'm going to be dog as well. really, I'm gonna be dog really bad yeah. tonight about how I appreciate that goes it, to a tip it on that, but I kind of laugh because I'm, I'm a big sports guy, and, of course, I pull for us to whip your butt every time we play. I hear you, I guarantee, you man. I guarantee, that's I guarantee, what makes the rivalry I, great. I guarantee you're not going, well, that's Moon over there. He put me on his program. We'll lose this game. That ain't never happened. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> But look, I had so many parents, STM parents, text me after the ball game. Sure. And I, I got to tell you, sure. that's first class, man. You know, when your opponents you know, reach coach, out like that. Coach, you know, I, I came through high school <clears> like <throat> you did and went to college, and we played, and you played those robbery games. That's what made it fun. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, they say you hate somebody, you don't really hate them. You just want to beat them. You hate and to when lose you beat to them, them. You can smile to them. Yeah, yeah. Y'all did not, people don't understand this. You did not beat STM in the regular season no. this year. But you want to stay championship. That's exactly. part of it. That's just part of the game. Exactly. Baseball can be so cruel, but on the flip side, I say it again: if you're teaching people, kids about God and family and work and stuff that you're doing, and baseball, yeah, uh, you're teaching them about life. Because yeah. I'm telling you, when they get out there in the real world, yeah, you're gonna have your ups and downs. Yeah. You're gonna fall flat on your face, but right. you got to be able to get up. And that's, that's why I love job. baseball. That's our job as educators. That's Prepare them for the workforce and for life, you know. So, well, good luck. Thank you, Moon. Again, God bless, and I wish you the best of luck in the God future. Bless. I don't, I don't, Happy birthday. I don't, I'm not pulling against you, but, but a few games. You understand? <laughs> That's okay. I don't want y'all to win when we play y'all either. <laughs> if you did, I, I, I would say you need, wrong to, with you. you need to be Perkins' assistant. <laughs> and I don't think that's what you want. So anyway, no. Take Coach care. Mike Thibodeau, Turley's Catholic, once again, third straight championship in a row, and uh, congratulations. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. By the way, before he gets back to the radio, STM's going to beat him again next year, but we're going to win the state championship. Yeah, he, didn't hear, he didn't hear that. He was out there. <laughs> well, of course he did. He waited until he walked out the room. Yeah, Coach Perkins and him going to whip him next year. So, uh, anyway, uh, he beat him twice this year. We just, you know, it had been a great finals that had been the two two teams in the day. But once again, he gets to the car because I know he listens to us sometimes. <laughs> I, I must have to shut up then. <laughs> <laughs> what a great guy, though. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I'm telling you what, in the baseball brand, I'm telling football is the biggest team sport. And you go, well, how do you figure that? And let me lay it on you. A quarterback can't get the ball without a center. He can't go back to pass without linemen. A running back cannot run without the linemen blocking and the wide receivers. A quarterback's got to throw it to somebody who has to catch it. You get my drift, man? Mm-hmm. You got to have a punt team and a punt receiving team. You got a kickoff team and a kick – a kick receiving team. You got to have a defense. You got to have an offense. You got to alternate. I mean, the ultimate team sport is, I'm not saying it's not another one. To me, the main three right. is, is football. You watched basketball game last night. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of isolation, one on one stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, baseball is the most humbling. I mean, uh, and even coach mentioned that. I mean, you're sitting there at third base or, or whatever, and you're having a bad day, and the ball's hit to you. Yep. Brandon, it's all you. It, I mean, it's, and nobody can help you catch that baseball. 
baseball is a game of failure. Like Mark Teixeira said with the New York Yankees, it's a game of failure. And so you have to rebound constantly. Well, what do you have to do in life? Yep. You have to rebound from failure constantly. Constantly. And the thing about it is, yes, baseball is a team sport. Mm-hmm. You got to throw it to first. Somebody has to catch it. But you better do your part first. So uh, anyway, I like talking to those guys and kind of visit with them. I remember when we had Robichaux on there. Uh, my ULMP, <laughs> Coach Robichaux from UL. I had ULMP, what are you doing with that coach on there? And I'm sure I hear that tonight. But uh, the fact of the matter is uh, he happened to be in the studio and I wanted to grab him. I had met him one time before and I wanted to congratulate him. I mean, when we beat him next year, he'll congratulate me when he walks in here. Not me personally, but uh, to Coach Perkins and him. So anyway, I always like to have a little fun anyway, folks. 844-766-6607. Hicks and Exit Hotline, if you'd like to be part of the program, is your opportunity to be a voice. And uh, by the way, we've had, in two and a half years, we've had three regular sessions, Brandon, six special sessions after this next one. We ain't got it right yet. It's called leadership. It's called leadership. We don't have it right yet. Uh, it's politics reform. They don't want to help the governor. So all these people that got elected on cutting government and cutting it back should now give in. I just It's amazing. I wish we had the media, the print media especially. Let me just focus on that. The print media in this state is so up. Bell Edwards is rear end. It's not even funny. It's, it's just every bit as bad as the national media did with Barack Obama. He could do no wrong, although he was doing wrong over and over again. And that's what we're fighting right now, folks. You pick up a newspaper and you read, example, the reason that, that you see the tours between him and uh, the co-governor, Darn and Edwards, they're going to all these hospitals, is they're going to be deemed the king. They're going to be deemed, we're fighting for y'all. No, you're fighting for more taxes. They're not being honest. They're not being honest in what they're fighting for. They're not fighting for y'all. They're not fighting for y'all at all. What they're fighting for is to keep taking money out of school teachers' pockets and coaches' pockets and accountants' pockets, talk show pockets, engineers' pockets. You know, people that do maintenance, people that work in a plant. That goal is to get as much money out of your pocket. That's that's it. The goal is not to fix anything. Jay Darden just said it, and I just read it to you a few minutes ago. The pundits are wrong for thinking we can live within our means. The pundits, and I'm considered a pundit. No pun intended, Brandon. I'm, <laughs> Brandon I'm, uh, there was no pun there, Moon. <laughs> Jay Darden made the comment, pundits who say we need to live within our means are now being proven wrong. You don't have to live within your means. You have to live outside your means. So that when they go around and do all this pep rally stuff, the pep rally is to make them look like they're the heroes. They're the saviors. And it makes it political. Jay Dodd said it's not political. It was 100% political. He can't even be honest. He doesn't want to be honest. What they're doing at these hospitals is 100% political. By the way, I wonder how much the special session is going to cost our state again. Well, Brandon, the way they set it up since they're cutting – the regular session off early, uh-huh. <laughs> it's going to probably run about the same as a regular session. They're trying to say they're good stewards. Oh, yeah. At least in, <laughs> in this tiny way, they're going to try and save some money. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah not, right. That Brandon. Yeah. They're not saving money. I know they're not saving money. They're looking for another half a billion dollars in taxes. Yeah. But that's, what they're, that's why they're doing You know what, Brandon, let me think about it. Let's think about this. Every year we do the whole session from the first day to the last. They never cut them off short, ever. But all of a sudden they can cut this one off short. Does that mean we're maybe spending too much money in uh, regular yeah. sessions? Yeah, too much money and too much time. Yeah, that's There's what I'm A lot I mean. of wasted time during this regular sessions as well. You know, but that's what I'm saying. In a regular session, we go from they started whatever date and ended on a date, and they never get out early. Does that mean we could be getting out of sessions early all the time? They just exposed something I don't think they meant to expose. No. That means that we're running these sessions from start to finish. You know, you got a 60-day or 90-day session. 
It looks like to me they can do it. Don't forget, they took days off, too. Seems like to me. Brandon, don't forget, too. They took many days off. They get paid vacation during the session. No, I know. Oh, no, I don't forget that. I know that. <laughs> That's part of the wasted time I was talking about. Yep. So. I mean, why, I mean, look, isn't it Texas that does every other year every other where year. they meet? Okay. So, in other words, they can deal with taxes every other year like us. We got Julie Stokes, Nancy Pelosi of uh, Louisiana, wanted to make it where you can raise taxes every year. Why don't we meet every other year? Why don't we just, why don't, if Texas has a better, better business climate, let's go look at what they're doing. Now, they don't have an homestead exemption, Brandon, but they don't have an income tax either. Yeah. You know, we heard WAG, Steve Texas Wags is side. just smarter about how they tax their uh, tax people. Well, they got They get their money, but they're they're smarter about the way they do it. But but the other thing is they got a growing state with a growing economy with growing exactly. jobs. That's how they get their money. In Louisiana, too. you feel like you're getting popped from all different angles. Well, you are, Brandon, because we got less people working, mm-hmm. we got more people leaving, and we got a GDP that's shrinking. Yeah. So when they tax you, it's fewer people paying more. But you can't tell them that. Let's go to Jack in Alexandria. Jack, how you doing? Hey man, listen. Brandon's the best producer you've ever had. I'll oh, man. That. <laughs> he just says that because he met you once. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, y'all have hey, not man. y'all have not fought for pay raises from other producers like yeah, Brandon. I'm gonna be first to tell you that. Well, you gonna give him a pay raise? That's great. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, Jack. Hey, my wins Jack, that much better. Jack, Jack, send me the money. I'll give him whatever you send me. <laughs> Cornelius will send you the money. <laughs> hey, Moon, here's my, my view on it. Until we find out what's in the 19,000 contracts, nobody's trying to, to do anything to save money here. What? It's a joke. Jay Darden took those contracts over back when he uh, became co-governor. He was going to do something about it. He just hadn't got back to us yet. I'm sure he's working on that daily. <laughs> hey, let, let me go, but listen, please, please give Brandon a raise here. <laughs> Brandon's kind of heavy, but if I can pick him up, I'll raise him as high as I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack, appreciate the call. I'm, Brandon, I'm going to let you stand on the chair where I can just say I raise yeah, you, yeah. okay? That way uh, it'd be a lot better for it. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, no, the contracts were supposed to be Jay Darden's deal. And Jay Darden was supposed to get back and look at all them contracts and tell us what we can cut. And guess what? He just couldn't find a place to cut on those contracts. He has never, he came back one time to give him a report. According to Lance Harris, he's been waiting for the next report and he's never given another one. Once again, the press won't, uh, Charlie Chan, they're not going to challenge the great Jay Dorton. Anybody smart enough to get $237,500 a year from state government and up their retirement from about eight or nine to about 14, 18, he is pretty smart. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. All right, we're going to go, Brandon, I think. Yep. But we'll be back tomorrow, folks. This is hump day. Tomorrow's Friday Eve. Wow, what a fast week. All right. I'm going to celebrate my birthday, Brandon, by doing what? Working. Working. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, man, years ago, I'd think, oh, my birthday, go fishing every time. That ain't happened since I've been here, man. I want it to happen. It just don't happen like it used to. <laughs> anyway, God bless, folks. Have an awesome, awesome day. Look forward to being back tomorrow.